On the slopes of Mount Carmel, in Israel's northern city of Haifa, sits the Baha'i World Center and the amazing Baha'i Gardens. A UN World Heritage site since 2008, the 19 terraces are about a kilometer from top to bottom, roughly a thousand steps. Adherents of the Baha'i religion worldwide visit the center, and the gardens are free and open to the public. Last year we had 750,000 visitors, uh, which puts the Baha'i gardens up there with Masada and Caesarea as one of the main tourist attractions in the north of Israel. Why gardens? According to Weinberg, because gardens are beautiful. I think there is a fundamental aspect of human nature which is its attraction to beauty. It inspires in us the feelings of nobility and spirituality. For Baha'i who make pilgrimages here, the golden domed shrine of the Bab, containing the remains of Baha'i's founder, are the culmination of every visit. One of the Bab's disciples, known as Baha'u'llah, was banished from Iran in 1853. He wandered for many years, until he was finally put in a prison in the then Ottoman city of Akko, where he died in 1892. Soon after, Baha'u'llah's disciples created the Shrine of the Bab on this slope that has developed into what it is today. You can see what is now Ben Gurion Avenue, just being this dusty track with a horse and cart. That's now a busy thoroughfare with lots of shops and restaurants. And then if you go up the mountain, you can see that the mountain was really bare and, and just a few rocks and bushes. And then this stone building about halfway up is actually the Shrine of the Bab the original building that was completed in 1909. Most of the gold covering the dome of the shrine, built in 1954, had worn away. And so the dome was recently renovated and regilded in an innovative process. The gold was actually mixed into the glaze and fired at a very high temperature onto the tiles. So we have something like um, 12,000 tiles on the shrine and we're promised, although none of us will be around to know it, <laughs> that they're going to last between two and three hundred years and not lose their luster. All the 450 plant species here are picked for their ability to survive with a minimum of water. And the extensive fountains are designed to conserve water. The water that you see on the terraces, uh, in the fountains and running in the rivulets down the side of the stairs, the, the whole system is designed in such a way that the same water is pumped around and purified and pumped back up the mountain and comes down again. Uniquely, about half of the workers in the gardens and the center are Baha'i volunteers. At the moment, about 600 from about 60 countries. One with a unique story is Salah. On my mother's side of the family, they're originally Palestinian. And my, uh, my grandparents were born in Akka, and my great-great-grandfather was in the Ottoman army at the time when Baha'u'llah was banished to Accra, and he was the colonel in charge of the prison barracks. Through his interactions, he eventually recognized Baha'u'llah and his message and became a Baha'i. Baha'i's peaceful visions of the equality of men and women, and of all humanity having a common source, certainly seem to have meaning among all this beauty. One of the analogies we find in the Baha'i writings is that the human race, in all its diversity, is really just like the flowers of one garden. If all the flowers were the same color, it would be a very dull and boring garden. But if uh, there's diversity, there's greater beauty. 